Hello and welcome. He spent his childhood so undernourished he didn't have the energy to go to school. But with the help of international food aid packages, he grew up to be one of the most astounding athletes his country ever produced. This week on One on One, meet the Kenyan long-distance running star, Paul Turgat. For those watching him set world records in long distance running, it would be hard to imagine that lack of food as a child made him weak and listless. But the story of Paul Turgat's rise to international fame is literally a rags to riches one for all his fellow Kenyans. With the help of the World Food Program from the age of eight, he began to shine as an athlete and soon started running the three miles to his local school. Before long, he was in the company of world leaders and becoming a role model for youth across Africa, nicknamed Kip Kaino, the father of running. His friendly rivalry with Ethiopian running star Haile Gebre Selassie is almost legendary in his field. But Turgat has also focused his life on his wife, Monica, and their children, and his desire to give something back by founding Soya, the prestigious Sports Personality of the Year Awards. Paul, I'm really delighted to have some time with you. It's a pleasure. Thank you. A pleasure. Tell me, your, your nickname, The Gentleman, where did that story come from? Um... I, I, I don't know. I mean, I've been in a... Dress like a gentleman, there's no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> I've been in a sport and uh, competing for many years. I've met many uh, people from across the world competing when I win, when I lose. I don't see that as a... Uh, as, 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 uh, in a negative way, but I see it that as a challenge because it keeps me to come back again in a strong way. Now, of course, Kenyans see you and, and your friend and competitor, Haile Gebre Selassie, as, uh, as like, well, you're sort of competitors and friends. You're the, you're the, the two main runners of the country. Uh, how, how do you balance the friendship and the competitiveness? Um, I want to tell you that um, when it comes to sports, uh, sports is different. Uh, at any time that we are competing together, regardless whether you are my brother, we compete fairly. So long as fairly, we compete. But after the competition, we are very good friends again. But out there, we are strong, strong competitors out there. Now, of course, athletics has become very commercial in recent years. Does that affect the way you, you treat the sport? Are you having to think about the commercialism a lot now? Can you just focus on the sport itself? Yes. Um, unlike many, many years ago, uh, where um, people used to see it as a, a sport uh, where it's only for people who didn't go to school, uh, probably. And, and, but again, things have changed. It does change a lot of lives, it does build a lot of bridges in terms of conflicts. Where there's a lot of conflicts, we tend to bring people together. People might not be able to speak the same language, but they want to speak uh, sports when we meet. Now, you have a wonderful story. You actually, it's very unusual for many people I interview because you were born into a, uh, a polygamous family and had, you had, you know, there were 17 children in that family. Were you all very close? Yes, uh, we were very, very, very close. Uh, this is a very interesting uh, story, and I'm sure many people, when I talk of uh, come from a polygamous family, they say, hey, what, uh, from, for what kind of polygamous family? Yes, I come uh, from a polygamous family with 17 children, and uh, the interesting thing is that uh, with this family also, we didn't have much uh, to, to eat. I mean, like, we could not support ourselves, and it was very difficult that time. How did it work? How did the family sort of integrate uh, from all the different backgrounds? Was, it, it, was there a common theme that ran through? Did you all share the same duties and everything? Yes, um, you find that's where we, we, where, we, where we, we grew up. Uh, it is, um, is a very remote part of our country uh, in Kenya, where it's very dry, very hilly, and often it's a very rocky place. And uh, we don't do a lot of agriculture, so that is where we tend to bond more uh, because uh, we tend to, when we are looking for food, we look for food to support each other. So this was in Rio, yeah? This is in Rio, yeah. yes. Your life changed in 1977. You were about eight years old when suddenly you started to get World Food Program uh, meals. And that gave you the energy to start to, to get to school and back, to run to school and back. Tell me about that. Yeah, I think I want to say that that was a defining moment in my life because uh, when, uh, we st when, when school reading program started in my school, this is the time that we all started now going to school. Uh, most of my, class, uh, my classmates, uh, we were very excited uh, to be in school. And it changed, it changed our lives forever. Because instead of staying uh, out there, staying at home, looking for food, because, uh, because that was actually the main thing, was to look for something to eat. And when it started one meal a day in school, it was a big incentive for all of us. And I want to assure you, 
we were in school and it changed my whole life until now. It's interesting also at that time you were you had a, um, a big admiration for Kip Kaino, the who was known as the father of running in Kenya. Uh, and I guess figures like him were, were big uh, role models. Yes, uh, Kipchoge Kaino in our country is, is a big name. He's our role model, uh, especially in, in, in running in Kenya. And uh, being uh, the national chairman of our National Olympic Committee until now, so he has been uh, able to anchor and uh, uh, took us through many things, uh, positive things in life. Interestingly enough, you had an interest in basketball first, and that's what you were really keen on. And then you, then you uh, won the, the Kenyan Cross Country Championship. And, and I think then really you realized what you could do with the running, yeah? Yes, uh, you see, because where I come from, as I said again, it was a very hilly place. Uh, I'm one of the first athletes who come from this part of the region uh, where uh, there was no any other st uh, strong athlete because Rio, when I talk of Rio, is um, because Maturito was sportsman or a, a strong uh, long distance runners are coming from Eldoret, uh, Kapsabet, and uh, in the Rift Valley. But I come from a, a very different part of the uh, of the country where yeah, it is always very difficult because it, it is very very hilly, very rocky, and very hot most of the time, so I was the first one. So if I, the first time that I, that I took uh, uh, up running, m many people even uh, could not, even the journalist, could not even uh, pronounce my name. When I say Paul, they say, who is Paul? Because they did, could not understand. They, the next day, I won a race, but they, the next day in the newspapers was Philip. Because I told them Paul, because they would not believe that, who is this? Who is this young man? Yeah, and something changed from that. You actually, when you first started running, I gather you found it difficult. It was physically difficult for you, is that correct? Yes, um, I, I won't say that uh, it was very, very difficult because I never knew that really that I had uh, such a special talent. When, uh, when the school training program started in my school, I was concentrating more in uh, school work, and I went through my primary education, uh, as, as you say, playing basketball and all that, because I never knew about running. But you wanted to be an engineer, I gather. Yes, yeah. yes, because, uh, and, and after that, after my primary education, I went to high school. F through the high school, I wanted I could to be an engineer and probably to look for something that is going to uh, give me something to able to support the family. And uh, that's where I started, I actually take the Air Force. Uh, at that time. That's right, you were 19, you, you, you became, uh, you essentially went into the military. What, what discipline did that teach you? How did that change the way you, you led your life? Yeah, one thing is that um, coming from a polygamous family, it, it, it gave me an opportunity to, to, to live, uh, as a, to know how to share and live together with many people. And it was a plus for me. And like when you were coming from, uh, when you were one child and different, so, so it gave me an opportunity, and that was at the time that I, when I was in the military, it was more of a training as a crew, which actually I enjoyed more, and it gave me even opportunity. And gave me opportunity also to meet people that I've never met, which were very great uh, sportsmen in our country, like Choni Ngugi, Moses Tanui, and many top runners who were in the military by then. Now you, it was obviously, must have been something of a wrench, 19 years old, leaving this big family that was so close. How, how did you find being away from home, being in, in a military environment? Yes, it was very challenging, but again, I had no option because I need to make a living for them. I need to earn some, uh, some money, I need a little money to support them. Because I had some other young, younger siblings, which I really wanted maybe to make sure that I give them also opportunity back at home to have food and go to school. So that was, uh, for me, even sports was not in my mind. But Im immediately after that, I realized that I had such a huge a talent. Because initially when I was young, maybe at the primary and high school, I never competed, I never competed, uh, represented my country uh, in the international, uh, maybe as a junior, because I never, I never knew. So until then, then I realized when I joined the military that, wow, what I had a special talent. Yeah, what did you, what do you think that your childhood and the challenges you faced through your childhood taught you in life? What was the biggest lesson you learned from that, those early years? Um, the, the biggest challenge is that um, is uh, going to bed uh, without food was a very hard thing that maybe I don't want to see any other child going to bed without food. Because for me, as I said again, when I was growing up, 
even going to school was not a, a priority because getting food was the real thing. So we would never be able to go and look for food maybe outside there and all that. But when the school feeding program started uh, uh, in our school, it was a big relief to all of us, me and also the whole family and the whole community. So many children uh, my age who went to school because school feeding program was studying my school and we were very excited. Do you, did, once you got into the military, were you encouraged with the sports though? Did you feel they give you a sense of try something? Yes, um, uh, with the military it's more of a physical work. So you then to train more of a physical work and this is actually what it, 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 it helps you uh, because nearly everything, the basic was more of a physical. And I think uh, more, more than that was uh, meeting the role models that I wanted to meet. People that I've never met, I always read the newspapers and watch the TV uh, when, when the opportunity comes. But I meet them uh, re in the real, re re real, re real, real time. Yeah. Well, you yourself became a huge star. I'm going to get onto that in just a moment. More one on one with Paul Tegat when we return. Welcome back. You're watching one on one. We're speaking with Kenyan born long distance runner Paul Tegat. Your uh, life changed once you started to really put your, your legs into use, once you started running and, and you won so many uh, top races. Once you started running ser you know, seriously, for example, you won five consecutive uh, awards of the International Association of Athletic Federations, uh, world cross-country titles between 1995 and 1999, and also two Olympic silver medals, uh, 1996 and 2000, um, only beaten then by Haile as well, who was your friend. I know you were competing, but did you feel the, the pressure to succeed? Did things really start to... to put pressure on you? Yes, I, I think I, I, in a big way, it was a more of a challenge to me because coming from a very humble background, as I could told me so many things, so many small basic things maybe to understand that uh, in life there's nothing easy. And uh, in sports, you have to be more of a gentleman, as you are saying. So I took everything by stride. So many awards that I've actually maybe I went to win for the five times world cross country straight uh, uh, winning f um, as you said again uh, silver medalist in the Olympics and 10,000 and all that and uh, these things that actually changed my life forever because it gave me also opportunity to go and maybe recognize they have a lot of recognition and honors across the world. Of course, it was uh, 2003 in, in Berlin when you got the world marathon record and uh, you held that, that really you, you, people started to notice. How did things change then for you? Did you find that it became easier to, to achieve the goals you wanted to? Um, I, I don't think there is anything that has been easy to achieve. It has been always a total sacrifice. I sacrificed so much because immediately after that I had also a family and all that. So I've been sacrificing a lot of being away from the family and competing internationally from either training in so far uh, countries uh, for a very long time. And those are some, some sacrifices that when one wants to achieve, you tend to sacrifice a lot. So, but after that, uh, it pays off. When it pays off, the family also would also understand that whatever that the sacrifice that you have made has really paid off. And this is something very important that uh, it, it came to uh, that uh, we all enjoy uh, later. Tell me about how your, your mindset changes when you go from training to competing. Um, the, the, beauty of the, 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 the beautiful thing uh, when you are going for training, I never train alone. I train as I said again, uh, coming from a, a large family, I know how to share, I know how to stay with m many people and, and that gives me an added advantage. So when it comes week over training, it gives you an opportunity to train. I train with a big car crew. So when it, co you, when it comes to competition, you compete. Because again, I, you also compete for even when I was young, we were competing also to eat. So those are the things that uh, it became more of a challenge. And those are the things that, uh, so when it comes to competition, I know that uh, there's no, as so long as it's a fair, a fair game, there was nothing that's going to stop me, not going to achieve the best. You also faced challenges. I mean, you, you know, the, when you uh, qualified for the national team, but then you couldn't run for the World Cross Country in Boston. D th those kind of challenges, how do they affect you emotionally? Yes, uh, 
those are some of the things, but I needed, that was a time, I needed a lot of uh, people to support me because uh, my first time in the national team, uh, traveling out of the country for the first time, and I could not be able to compete because I was the best in the country at that time, but I had a very big injury once I arrived in Boston where I could not be able to even to go to, um, to, to, the, to the satellite, and it was very disappointing to me. But again, I look back, yes, if I was able to come up until I was able to be the best in the country, I'm still going to, pick, uh, to come back. But it took me a while to come back again because the injury was, was big. Tell me, there was, a, there was an embarrassing moment when you were invited to run in France and turned up late. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because uh, this, this was the biggest moment. I mean, this was an embarrassing for me because I can say this was an embarrassing moment because uh, uh, people were talking French, and for me, I, I didn't know I understand. So by the time the game, I mean, the game was already started, uh, people were being called. So the game, uh, uh, the, the race was starting, and I didn't know that it was starting. So because it was my first time in France, so by the time I'm arriving, they read the faster part already left. So, but I had to follow them <laughs> all the way. So that was the second. Those are some of the challenges that we we face as sportsmen. You had a wonderful finish uh, in New York Central Park, though, in 2005 in the marathon. Uh, when you sprinted to the end there, does the location of where you run make a big difference to how energized you feel? Um, I want to tell you that um, for many competitions that I've won, I've won many competitions, especially if you are winning a, if you are going to a competition or maybe coming to the finish line with any defending champion, it is never easy. You will always fight to the last minute. And that's what happened with Ramallah, Andrew Ramallah. And um, until it surprised me also that I won that race because I, I wasn't, ex I thought I could have lost the race, but uh, it was a very, very, very tough race. You're a believer in giving back. I know it's very important to you. And as you say, you learn to share, you learn to uh, respect your past. And in 2004, you became a Goodwill Ambassador or an ambassador for the World Food Program, which is kind of ironic. It's almost like full circle that it was the World Food Program that helped you in a way to become what you are. And now you're, you're actually putting something back there. What is it you like to achieve? What is it you, you aim to achieve as an ambassador? Um, the, the one is the one is the most important is that uh, for me I want to see that uh, the young people are given opportunity uh, to pursue their education uh, because without education one is not going to have uh, a, a, a meaningful life and uh, secondly is that um, once we want to see a meaningful change in the society and and and, and also in the world we have one has to have education and those are some things that maybe I really want to see for me to see. Uh, one children or maybe kids are going to uh, to bed or going to school without having food, or children being out of school. Thousands or millions of children are being out of school without, uh, not going to school because of hunger. And then it's, it pains me. So if I can be able to do, to need my, to be, keep my time and do something, and I'm happy that uh, Tabula gave me this opportunity to give back something to see that maybe one or two children can get the opportunity uh, through the campaign and creating awareness so that uh, many people can able to support the initiatives of WFP so that uh, we could see more children getting to school and having education. Do you go out on quite a few trips with the WFP? Yes, I do I go a lot. Do you find the politicians and those people in power respond to you when you approach them? I know you met uh, Condoleezza Rice when she was U.S. Secretary of State, and you've met with many top U.S. senators. Do they listen? They do listen. Uh, what humbles me is that uh, they, they, they do understand, and they give us opportunity. And, and they, because they, these are the people who are um, moving things. Because when you meet government officials and, or uh, political uh, people who are actually moving things to move, uh, people uh, in the corporate institutions and all that, they understand the importance because I'm a, a living example that without the support that I got through the WFP, I could not be who I am today. And that's why the other children outside there would not have, a, uh, if they don't get this opportunity, they would not have a, a meaningful life uh, that we want to see as we are talking of uh, development, uh, Millennium Development Calls.
Now, one thing you did do was use your education to uh, put it to good use with uh, with your business skills, because you you have a lot of businesses now, from farming into I think finance and PR and a whole range of things. Do you find that you're now stretched? Do you, do you have enough time to focus on the things you want to? Or are you getting stretched thin with all the, the interests? Oh, I, I, I do have time uh, because the important thing is that when you have you employ you have people, professionals who can run all this stuff, uh, then uh, you know that everything will go well. You don't have to worry. But golf takes up a lot of time. I know you like golf. <laughs> yes, this is, this is one thing now that I want to start now. I want to play golf now. Yeah. <laughs> it's a much slower pace than you're used to. But it's fun. It's fun. It's part of the sport. What about things that you want to achieve that, you know, you, on your list of priorities you haven't had a chance to touch on yet? Is there anything outstanding you want to get to? Yes. Um, one thing that maybe, as I said again, that um, uh, having a foundation, I really also want to see that uh, assist maybe young and upcoming uh, sportsmen to achieve their potential. Because they are also young and upcoming, very intelligent athletes, but they, they are coming from four families. But they cannot be able to have quality education and college education and all that. But I want to see that uh, they also pursue that uh, have that opportunity to pursue a college education and pursue their careers too. Now, of course, Paul, people will remember you for your amazing running skills, but what would you like your legacy to be? How would you like to be remembered? Um, one thing that I really want to see is that, uh, to be remembered is that, um, one, I've already started uh, so many things in my life, uh, like uh, from my foundation, and secondly, I've started awards sports awards in our country which in, encompass all the sports so these awards is it cuts across the football boxing and all that this is something that uh, it's to motivate and recognize the the contribution of these great sportsmen in our country and that will always come up and see yes we want to be like that uh, I want to win this uh, uh, awards and uh, and be it work, I say, yes, I, con to contribute something to the country. Paul, bless you. I wish you a lot of luck with all your activism. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much.